Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution? Or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Om Times Radio. Hi, good Mo good afternoon and good morning here in Singapore. This is 5 a.m. in Singapore and we are still in the midst of Lunar New Year. This is Dr. Martha Tara Lee of Arrows Evolution where sexuality and spirituality meet. Today on my show, we have the title, The Five Keys to a Happy Sex Life. And my guest is actually my supervisor and mentor, Dr. Patty Britton. She is a clinical sexologist, sexuality educator, and master sex coach with top-level credentials. She runs a private practice in Los Angeles and via Skype globally. She is the co-founder of Sex Coach U, the world's premier credentialing and training institute for sex coaching. Today, she will be sharing her unique model for unblocking the stuck places in your sex life. She will share her approach using the MEMS mat uh, matrix so that you can identify where you're stuck and move past those issues in your sex life. She will describe examples of people she has helped and reveal the magic she has brought into people's lives as the pioneer in sex coaching in the world. So trust me, Patty is the one and only one of the best people that I could possibly bring onto this show and I've been looking forward to bringing her on Arrows Evolution for some weeks now. So welcome Patty. Thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, fantastic. Thank Great. you again for coming on this show and making time. I know you are extremely busy. You are an inspiration to me. But for listeners out there, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about your expertise. Well, thank you so much, Martha Lee. I'm so happy to be with you on the show. I think what you're doing is just magnificent with your unique contribution to the world. And as I travel the world and I do a lot, I, the more that I travel, the more countries that I visit, the more students and trainees that I come in contact with, the more I see the dire need on this planet for sexual healing and also sexual enlightenment. I, I think we live in a dark time in many ways around values and the mythology and the misunderstanding of what really healthy sexuality is all about. So thank you so much for inviting me and for the work that you do. You you did such a great job at describing my background. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, because, you know, I, I, I have been a mentor and a supervisor to you, and yes. I just have been so proud of the work that you do, and you honor me by your contributions. And I've been doing this work as a clinical sexologist for um, almost 40 years. And I know my voice sounds like I'm a lot younger, um, but I am definitely in the boomer generation. And one of the things that I offer to the world that is really exciting for me, along with the co-founder of Sex Coach University, which is sexcoachletteru.com, is Dr. Robert Dunlap, who is not only my co-founder of Sex Coach U, but also my life partner. And one of the new things that we're bringing out to the world, we've been doing this for about a year, is we have our own online radio show called The Boom Doctors because we find as we, you know, the more people we talk to and being in the boomer life ourselves as people who are definitely over 65 is that there's just such a dearth of knowledge. There's such a lack of awareness and permission for people as we age to not only talk about their sexuality and their sexual needs, but to find accurate information and to heal the wounds of expectation that at 60, we're gonna have the body of a 20 year old or the libido or desire of a 20 year old. And all of the issues that plague us as we're aging are the various things that we talk about on our show. So that's one of my, my, my new kind of favorite things to do. And of course, I am a clinician. I have a private practice, as you said, as a, the pioneer of sex coaching as its own modality. 
And I also do a lot in training professionals. And, and I think it's important for your listeners to know, at least in this country in the U.S., that people who are trained either as medical professionals or as therapists or counselors or social workers really don't get great training, if any at all, in sexuality, in, in the understanding of what it means to talk openly and create a safe container for your patients or your clients to share their sexual issues, their pains, their stuck places, and also they're, they're afraid themselves of getting into that conversation. So my joy is training other professionals and how to work sexologically with their clients or their patients. And that's part of the mission at Sex Coach U in bringing other people who come from different backgrounds into our modality as sex coaches, but also teaching clinical sexology to professionals. Um, so we do that. And also one of the other things I'm, I'm really thrilled about is that I'm the host of a large number of explicit teaching videos that are in the couple's sexual enhancement DVD genre. And these are really important because we're not taught how to be sexual. We're taught the bad news about sex. We're mm -hmm. taught what not to be, what not to do. Or we see idealized and really almost exploitive images sometimes of how sex works through adult entertainment. And we don't know how to be good lovers. We don't know how sex works. So I love being the host of the DVDs at the Alexander Institute. The website is lovingsex.com. And overall, over the last 10 to 15 years, I've been the host of over 40 of these couples enhancement DVDs. And it's just a thrill to be able to not only lead them, design them, go on camera, be a narrator, but I get to co-edit not only what comes out from the camera, but also direct the demonstration. So that's a really fun part of what I do. And I'm working on um, I'm working on a couple of books right now, and I'm also involved in other projects. So I do keep myself busy because it's my passion to help people heal. It's my passion to let people discover who are you as a sexual being. That buzzword we hear a lot today: become your authentic sexual self. I say celebrate your sexual self, and that every one of us deserves to really be, become realized as a sexual being, to become all that we can be. So that's enough of me right now. I'll shoot it back to you. Thank you so much. You, you have so much um, impressive uh, credentials, including being a past president of ASEC, which is the leading organization in the world for people who are sexuality educators, counselors, and therapists. So... You are the person that um, I really look up to. There's just so many things we can talk about, all your credentials. On this show, however, we are exploring <laughs> the link between uh, sexuality and spirituality. So just bringing you uh, into the topic straight away, uh, what actually, um, do you have anything to uh, talk about the link between sexuality and spirituality? Well, I do. And, and I think it's timely because this is a time in our world where I believe one of the big trends in our understanding of sexuality is the added flair or the spin or the emphasis on really looking at sexuality and spirituality as uniquely linked, in fact, as essential components. And I was, I was in a funny situation. I don't even know if you know the story, but in 1993, I earned my PhD from the same institute that you earned your doctorate from, the Institute for the Advanced Study of Human Sexuality in San Francisco. I'm also an interim academic dean there. And I love that school I, because it's one of the few places on earth where we're given permission to explore all the dimensions of sexuality and we understand the positive sexual approach. And we're given permission to really, I would say, explore who we are first so that then we can really address sexuality for other people. And when I got my degree, I was in a situation where I had opened my private practice that same year and I was asked to give a talk 
on how do I work? And I had training in sex therapy. I was a certified sexuality educator by then. I was well known. I had jobs in leading American sexual health organizations like Planned Parenthood National and the Sex Information and Education Council of the United States. I had just been the national director for a teacher training project to stop the spread of HIV AIDS among school-based youth. So I've always had these great positions as a leader in, in sexual health and wellness and pleasure. But I didn't know what the heck I was going to talk about when this woman said, I want you to be a speaker at our conference and I want you to share how you work. And I went, oh, I guess I need a model. <laughs> so mm. I said to myself, well, here's how other people do it, how they construct sex therapy models, sexuality education models. But it didn't seem like enough to me. And so I went deep within myself and I looked at all of what I knew about our sexual selves, about who we are, what makes us a sexual person and what allows us to thrive, what allows us to become just whole. That's what healing really means and to become true to ourselves. And so I came up with an acronym called MEBS, M-E-B-E-S. And the reason I did is because I was searching for what are the parts of us that affect our sexuality. And when I began to dig into my own knowledge and my own sense about it, I realized that sex is not a mechanical act. We all know that. It's not just about tab A in slot or hole B. It's really about the whole person. And so my model became an integration of five elements, the mind, the emotions, the body itself, and our body image issues, our energy, and our spirit. And so there I was long ago developing a model that was one of the first to come out and be shared with the world in my book, The Art of Sex Coaching. And I hear music, so I'm going to pause right there. Yes, thank you. So after a break, we will find out more about Patty's uh, model. So stay tuned. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Hi, this is Angela Levesque, host of Entanglement Radio. Join me Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern for inspiring conversations with visionaries in spiritual science and Conscious Healing. Entanglement Radio, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern. Transcendent talk for the conscious mind. Join Elliot Jolish, the business therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jolish Hour. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive dedicated community. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back to Arrow's Evolution. This is Dr. Martha Tara Lee. I'm a clinical sexologist and my company is called Arrow's Coaching and hence the name Arrow's Evolution. This is where I explore the link between sexuality and spirituality simply because this is something that I'm personally interested in and I feel that there's a lot of misconceptions around sexuality and the role and importance that it is in in our spiritual evolution. I have with me on this show today, Dr. Patty Britton. She is my supervisor and I love her so much. She is a well-respected pioneer and leader in the field of sexuality. She is the 
author of hundreds of articles for amazing books and is a former columnist for Penthouse Forum. She has, as she mentioned just now, hosted more than 40 DVDs for women's and couples' sexual enhancement. You can find her DVDs on lovingsex.com. So just now before the break, Patty was talking about her model on the memes ma- uh, model. So uh, tell us more about mind, emotions, body, energy, spirit. I will. And, and it's so important to look at the connections, the body, mind, spirit connection, because one of the trends today, as I mentioned earlier in the show, is that there really is a worldwide emphasis looking at spirituality as an aspect of our sexuality. One of our dear friends and one of one of my mentors is Dr. Gina Ogden. And one of her contributions is really, especially in her latest book, Expanding the Practice of Sex Therapy, is her model called, unfortunately, this is the name of it, ISIS. <laughs> now I know today in 2015 that it, you know, the goddess was ISIS, and ISIS Um, is a word that reverberates with negative connotations because of the terrible war that is going on in this nation and in this world, I should say. But ISIS is the integration of spirituality and sexuality, and it's based on some very hard scientific research that she conducted among thousands of people who really began to speak out about the link, as you use that word so beautifully, the link in our sexuality and our sexual story with spirituality. Now, in my Meebs matrix, M-E-B-E-S, what I like to look at spirit, that fifth component as, is two things, and they're quite different. One of them is our spirit, the spirit of who I know myself to be. That's our essence. And I like to liken it to a flame, like a candle's flame, or even embers glowing and the and when the wood has quieted down in the fireplace or the hearth, and there are just embers that can be reignited by fanning them, bringing oxygen and air to them to reignite them so they can become a fire. That flame is who we are. That's our essence. That's one metaphor to talk about it. And our spirit is often why couples or clients individually come to see me. Sometimes their spirit is I want to say it's been knocked out of them or mm. it's it's really the flame. It, it, they can't access the flame. They don't even know if the flame still exists in them. They've given up hope. I see that a lot with my clients. And, and I don't see it just with women. I see it with men who, you know, I have a new client who is an earlier rapid ejaculator who's given up. He's in his late 30s and he's tried everything until he found me and how I work as a clinical sexologist and sex coach. And in two sessions, he's been able to reignite his sense of self, his sense of who he is, his potential. And he has that really important word that we always like to drive our clients toward in their sexual expression. And that's hope. Our clients need to have hope that they can be healed, hope that they can be the best that they can be, and hope that they can really enjoy pleasure. So that's one aspect of S in my Meebs matrix model. But the other aspect of it is spirituality itself. And by that, I mean spiritual paths or pathways that can really imbue a sense of the sacred in how we regard ourselves and or our partners as sexual beings. That, that ability to connect spirit to spirit, that ability to align with another human being. And even, and, and this may sound really strange, I believe that there is something so spiritual and sacred and mystical and powerful about the very act of sexual intercourse itself. Sometimes I say to my clients or my students or my trainees, do you realize how incredible it is that in sexual intercourse and penetrative sex, and we are on internet radio, so I can talk about this, right? Yeah. (laughs) We have a a man, I'm speaking heterosexually, of course, right now, but we have a, a living man with a penis that is inside the body of another human being. And there's a power to that. There's an intrinsic spirituality imbued in that. There's a, a sacredness if we could honor that. 
And it's really powerful to think about that. I know as a female who has a sexual orientation as a heterosexual, there are moments when I really have to stop and, and take notice of that. Like, oh, oh my God. And even when we think of what people say at orgasm, what do they say? Oh God, I'm coming or whatever it is. You know that, why is it that people say, oh God? Mm -hmm. That's almost proof of the spiritual dynamic in our sexuality, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the work that, that you do and the work that I do, I think it would be impossible to leave out the S in the equation, the spirit or the spirituality. And I think that part of our job, for lack of a better word, part of our responsibility ethically is to offer to our clients, introduce them to the various pathways that are out there in the world today that could potentially enhance their sexual experience. And w maybe we can get into that a little bit as we talk. Mm. So Dr. Patty, I'm, I, I, I guess I really need to ask this because I hear this uh, quite a bit from my clients. What would you say to somebody who keeps insisting that sex is only a physical act? How would you respond to that if they don't believe in anything about spirituality? Well, I think it comes down to the, the second E in my matrix that is M-E-B-E-S and that is energy. And mm -hmm. I think that everyone can, I think spirit and spirituality can actually be a trigger for some people toward discomfort. And I think, I know, I don't think that in the world today, when we look at the concept of spirituality or spiritual practice, the fear and the reverberation effect sometimes negatively as a, as a pushback is that it may come across as religion. And, you know, we're, we're in a time right now, speaking of ISIS, where we're really experiencing global religious wars going on. And they're very frightening for most people, especially if you tune into the global impact of them and the lack of a geographical location. But this this fear of infusion of of people who are enemies coming onto our own territory, our own turf and the sense of chaos, the sense of not being able to either corral or control where the enemy lies. That's the world we live in today. It's a very uncertain world. And it's a world that's filled with threat and fear and anxiety and uncertainty. And so because so much of that is linked to religiosity and to extreme religiosity, I think people have a, a there's a trigger effect, isn't there? There's a, um, a backlash. That's the word I've been searching for in my head. There's a backlash against spirit and spirituality because there's a fear that it's religiosity. And it isn't at all. In fact, a lot of times when I encourage someone to connect with spirituality, I will send them to nature. And I, I think that's universal. Don't you agree? Mm, yes. Everybody you know? would agree with that. You know, when, when I, I, I will talk later, I hope, about some of the ritual work that I do with my clients. When, when I find myself on a, on a beach on the coast of California and the sun is golden and the waves are cracking and crashing and they're blue and green and and, and creatures like beautiful birds are running in the surf and, and whales are breaching. This is a real experience I had two weeks ago. Uh, humpback yeah. whales in, in pairs are breaching not far out from the beach. And, and the air is cool from the wind, the breezes that are blowing. And the trees are bright green. They're, it almost hurts to look at them in the golden light of the sun. And the sound of the ocean. I mean, those are things that anchor us into a reverence of nature, into a sense of the power of beholding beauty, the beauty of our planet even, has an energetic effect on us. And when I take the word spirituality out of the equation with some of my clients, I have clients who are not open to that. That's just mm -hmm. not in their language. That's not in the, in, in the construction of how they see themselves as, as human beings. They're not spiritual. And so when we shift uh, to something more universal, like nature, like in, like beauty, like the reverence that I was talking about on a, on a scene at the ocean side, or when we 
you know, have them listen to music that really evokes something spiritual in them, but they don't need to address it with that label. Sometimes people will listen to music, that classical music or jazz music or music that is in fact sacred music or, you know, world music that has so many themes from different cultures, one of my favorite genres of music. And, and there is an opening, there's a reverence, there's a, an appreciation, and that's a place we can take almost everyone. And I think your question is so important because sometimes we wanna be so careful of not pushing our clients or our listeners into a, a, a part of their life that doesn't fit for them. Everything has to be in alignment with who they are in order for growth to occur. Fantastic. So how, how when did you, I know you, you said you came up with this model as part of a, uh, a talk that you were doing. Uh, how how did how did you come up with it with like lots of research meditation no <laughs> <laughs> no because you know you, you know me and and you have to understand i think that when when you work with something for so many years and you're really leading <laughs> you're at the leading edge so to speak there isn't a research that informs models sometimes. Now I'm gathering the research to substantiate the model, but the model really evolved out of 20 plus years of experience mm -hmm. and expertise and kind of on the job training, I'm going to call it, because having been the Associate Director of Education at National Planned Parenthood, I, I, I was the person who ran the database, the clearinghouse for sexuality education materials. I was the person who wrote um, the newsletter to, gosh, I think we had 800 sex educators throughout the whole United States who were all part of Planned Parenthood affiliates, we called them, from the national office. They would become an affiliate and then have their own education department, and I was their go-to person. I used to design and run workshops. I made field visits. I wrote extensively on sexuality education as a part of the leadership of Planned Parenthood National Office. Mm. So we have a commercial break. When we come back, we'll explore more about the link between sexuality and spirituality. Spiritual and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Know what to do, just can't figure out how to fit it all into your busy life? It doesn't have to be that way. Hi, I'm Ellen Baysberg from Seamless Life. Join me every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on Home Times Radio and learn the how of conscious living. Let me and my guests help make your life seamless. Radio Namaste leads you down the yellow brick road into portals of consciousness with the blue collar goddess as your host. Interviews with humans who could be famous or just popular, and answers to everything are on the agenda. Tune into Om Times Radio and drop in on Thursdays at 3 Eastern. It's a different brand of enlightenment. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. The number one reason girls drop out of school in Sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Welcome back to Arrow's Evolution and we are on Om Times Radio Network. You can actually share this show with your friends right now by sending them the link omtimes.com forward slash mobile. omtimes.com forward slash 
mobile. And basically, with this link, your friends can listen to the show without needing any kind of app, just the link. So this is a very advanced technology that we are enjoying on this platform. I have with me Patty Britton, and she is a clinical sexologist, sexuality educator, and master sex coach. She uh, co-hosts a dynamic weekly radio show for the boomer generation that she's mentioned just now. And the link is theboomdoctors.com. Dr. Patty Britton uh, believes that women and men have a divine birthright to express our authentic sexual self. So welcome back again, um, Dr. Patty Britton. Thank you. Glad to be back. So please share with us more about uh, the link between sexuality and spirituality. What can listeners do to explore this link? Well, one of the things that I, I like to emphasize is being holistic as a practitioner and really going with where the client is at. Um, I'm sure you know, as a really seasoned sexuality educator and a clinician yourself, that whether we're a coach or a counselor or a therapist, we have to meet the client where the client is at, not impose our values or views on the client. And so we were, earlier we were speaking about the word spirituality and how sometimes that can have a backlash effect because our clients or our students or our listeners, whatever venue it is that we're working in, may not resonate, another word that we hear a lot today. Um, and it's interesting as a word because it has to do with really vibration. It's a lot like music when you pluck a string on a harp. It, it has vibratory sound and it resonates. And we feel that, we hear that in our ears, but we also feel it in our bodies. And, uh, and our sexuality is like that as well. And so I think that we have to determine where someone is at and what they are open to receiving to allow them to make the link between sexuality and spirituality, and more so than what I've been attempting to share already on this show, like saying, oh God, at orgasm. Mm -hmm. But I like to use um, different techniques or strategies, or even bring in kind of what we used to call new age technologies and ways of being and ways of looking. Now, one of the things that I really love one of my books was the um, Complete Idiot's Guide to Sensual Massage. And one of the things I, I loved in writing that book was that my co-author and I were able to put together a chart. And in that chart, it because it's a book on massage after all, basically, in that chart is a list of maybe 20 essential oils. And on the chart are their properties. So some of those oils, like rose oil, for example, extracted from living roses, is the highest vibration that we have among the, the plant and flower species. And when we apply rose as an extract or a high quality rose perfume, for example, what we're doing is we're actually raising our own vibration. And that's part of spirituality. We may have a another scent or another essential oil that opens up another aspect of ourselves, like enhances our desire. One of those is Lang Lang, Y-L-A-N-G, Y-L-A-N-G. Believe it or not, that's the, that's the name. And that opens up not only the heart chakra, but in, enhances our desire and our openness, just like pheromones might do. Um, one of the nice things about being in Los Angeles is that I get to visit sex shops, I get to go to expos, I get to go to amazing conferences. I hopefully, I'm usually a presenter. <laughs> hopefully, you know, I also do that in other parts of the world um, as much as I can. But one of the latest expos that I was at was called SHE, Sexual Health Education, I think is what it stood for. And it was really interesting because there was a vendor there who had pheromone collection and it's called eye of love mm -hmm. and i was so drawn to their table because having written the sense the sensual massage book and being quoted a lot in the media i still get quotes that came out years ago 
but I'm still asked by magazines and, and news sources to comment on our senses, to comment on sensuality and touch, which can evoke a, a spiritual experience for many people. And here they were with this beautiful little booth and all these beautiful bottles, and I got to get samples. It's called I E Y E of Love. Dot com, and it's a whole collection. I'm holding the catalog now as I'm talking to you. It's a whole collection of male and female pheromones, which are our natural signalers that our body emits that are sent out as attractants, just as works in the world of insects. <laughs> so, you know, we're now understanding a lot more science is behind what we used to look at as kind of that new age world. But again, it depends on where our clients are at. Some of the things that I often recommend to people that is a spiritual practice, but I don't always call it that. Again, it's, it's evoking a consciousness, a mindfulness, working with the non-physical aspects of a person's life to enhance their sexuality. I do a lot of work with affirmations, positive thinking and using that in action. And, you know, if we if we want, we can talk more about that. But I also have people do things like have healing crystals in your environment. I once had a couple who were infertile and they were in very great emotional pain and it financially had already liquidated 80,000 American dollars on trying to find the answer to their fertility issues. And it turned out that actually he had something going on physiologically in his testes. And it was he who was the, the reason that the two of them couldn't procreate. And what was so interesting about it is that I didn't visit their home. Of course, as a sex coach, we have a lot more freedom. We can actually go to the home of a client if we want to. Because I'm also trained as a feng shui master, I can go in and actually make adjustments to a home. Or I can elicit that by having pictures of their home or by having a discussion in very great detail about how the arrangement is using the system that I'm trained in, which is the black hat tradition. And this couple, I could tell that their bedroom was not a sexy place. I could tell that their bedroom was actually the dog's room. <laughs> they had a dog that ran their lives. Their kind of substitute baby. You get where I'm going with this? Yeah. Okay, so they were longing for a baby, a human baby but they were pouring all this energy into this barking little dog and the, their bedroom was all devoted to the dog's bed, the dog's toys. And it was a place of fear for them and of disappointment. So I said, you need to power up your room. And I got them to go to a, a, this special shop in Los Angeles area and buy a large tower of amethyst. This was mm -hmm. a lot of money. They, had, they were able to do that, thank goodness for them. And they put it in their bedroom and they began to change how their bedroom looked and they removed the dog's uh, toys from all over the floor. And they put the dog in a kennel at night, which is an appropriate behavior to do for dogs. Dogs like having their own little house, actually, instead of sleeping in their bed between them and keeping them from each other. Mm -hmm. And within weeks, they came back and reported that everything felt different that they had new hope, they had a new connection with each other and that the space felt calming and healing and sexy. So just adding in one object, one object of an amethyst crystal, a large one, we're talking maybe two feet high by a foot and something like that or having, you know, beautiful decor in a bedroom. I often coach men who are older male virgins who don't know anything really about dating, who live in a man cave. <laughs> they're often the geek. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. And, and they're the guys who, you know, their, their apartment or their home is not really a place to bring home somebody that they meet and be seductive or have that person feel welcome or relaxed because they may live in a chaotic environment or a messy environment, a dirty environment, but not one that is conducive because what spirituality is, is that energetic in the background. And so helping them really look at and make change in their environment can all, always be a very positive influence on how it feels. 
So, uh, you know, I have other things to share, but I'm going to let you ask me other questions. <laughs> so you talked about uh, the influence uh, positive effects of crystals, which I believe in as well, and affirmations. Uh, is there anything else that uh, listeners can do? Well, I think that part of it is to keep a mindset. I, I think that so much of life is really your mindset. And there's a wonderful expression, um, and, and that is put a higher altitude on your attitude, <laughs> elevate your vibration. And you know, we know from really a lot of scientific research now that we even have research on the vibration of different emotions, different emotional states. And, and deliberately to elevate your vibrational state, it's easy, not so easy to elevate your emotional state. It's easy to go to sources where you know you can start laughing, for example. Laughter is a very high emotional state. We know from the, you know, the, the famous example of Norman Cousins, who was dying of heavy metal poisoning, locked himself purportedly in a hotel room for a week or a weekend and watched old movies that were really funny and laughed himself through this crisis into a healing state. And so going to see a funny movie together, like Hangover, for example, you know, Hangover 1 or 2 or 3, <laughs> um, are, are they're very uh, explicit R-rated movies, but they're really funny. Um, there are other movies that are funny that couples can enjoy where they go and they laugh together. And having that laughter becomes something that alleviates some of the tension, some of the hurt, some of the wounding that people feel. And, you know, it's, we're not talking about putting a crystal on the desk. We're talking about changing your state, your energetic state and your vibrational state. And I did talk about oils. Um, I talk about using chants, for example. Sacred music has its own vibration. So burning candles is another. I have many, many clients that I have sent to um, particular stores or websites where they can purchase candles that have essential oils in them. And sometimes those candles are also blessed. And that means that we, we know today, and this is true of the work of Gina Ogden as well, that many people come from a shamanic tradition. And I'd be happy to talk about that after the break. Sure, great, thank you so much. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Hi, my name is Monica and I'm the host of Co-Creating Now. Give yourself an opportunity to connect with your all-knowing higher self and manifest joy, love and peace together every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern. The Laying Out of Hands Healing Radio Show is about treating the whole person, mind, body and spirit. Join me, Charles Smith, as I share life balancing measures such as nutrition and spiritual practices to help you take charge of your own health and wellness every Thursday at 7 p.m. on OM Times Radio. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. The Cutting Edge of Conscious Radio. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. 
Welcome back to Arrow's Evolution, where we explore the link between sexuality and spirituality. This is Dr. Martha Tara Lee, and I have with me Dr. Patty Britton. So she has been, um, she is a popular uh, speaker, sought after trainer, and workshop leader. If you've enjoyed this interview that I've had with her, you can obtain your very own complimentary sex coaching discovery session that Dr. Patty is offering. So you have to go to her website, Dr. Patty Britton, and mention sex coach discovery uh, session. And you can have a session with her where you can learn how to unblock your own sexual roadblocks and gain insights for yourself in this private online session is valued at $400. So Dr. Patty is highly experienced, as you know. If you enjoyed listening to her and her energy, do go on to her homepage and ask to for time to secure your session today. She also has a website called sexcoachu.com, which you can also visit. So, uh, Dr. Patty, you were talking a little bit about shamanism just now. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, and um, actually, I'm, I'm realizing we don't have a lot of time left. I have so much more to share. Mm. Um, and I, I just want to make a side note that if you go to the webpage, the homepage at drpattybritton.com, if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see a button and it says book it. That's how you get your complimentary sex coaching discovery session with me. So it's really easy to do that. So I, I was talking about shamanism. There's a really interesting movement, um, just as I was saying, the integration of Spirituality and sexuality is a worldwide movement. We've seen it everywhere we've gone, whether it's uh, Amsterdam or the UK or Poland or the Czech Republic, any of the countries that we visited uh, as we do as we go around the world. And that's it's just growing and growing and growing. And one of the things that I also see growing is an emphasis on shamanic traditions. And there are many people who claim to be shamans. Not all of them really are. So you want to qualify people that you're going to allow to do deep, intimate work with yourself. Dr. Gina Ogden is trained in a Peruvian shamanic tradition. And part of how that works is by opening up energies. We've been talking about spirituality. And I was saying earlier that for those who don't want to speak in that language, so to speak, I often frame it as energy work, as energetics. That's the language I use. And I've never had anybody say, oh, don't talk about that. Everyone seems to have an opening around that. And shamanic traditions may include opening up and allowing energies to move. That might include something as logical as dancing, getting people dancing. I can't tell you how many times I have sent my clients to go to a gym, to, to work in their fitness arena, or even to go dancing as couples and reconnect with that essence. That's part of their, that spirit in them that wants to come alive again. And also the playful part of self. That's part of the spirit of the child that lives in every adult. It just needs to be accessed. Part of what shamanic tradition also is kind of known for is things like drumming. And if we were doing this on, on video, Skype video, I might show you my drum. I don't have it out right now, but I have my own shamanic drum that I use to evoke energy movement in certain circumstances when I'm doing trainings and workshops. And also rattles. There are rattles, things you can shake that make noise and, and, and just clearing and moving energy. That's what a lot of the work is about. The other thing I, I wanted to share is I have some tips about what I think are really important strategies in lifestyle management for your listeners. And can I talk a little bit about what I, I'd like to share? Yes, definitely. Please. So part of what I see today is that people are uh, addicted, <laughs> with quotes around it, to their smartphones, to their tablets, to anything electronic that will steal them from being in real life, in real time, or being present. What spirituality is about in so many ways is about being in the moment, being conscious of what is. And I, I, I'm an advocate for do not overfeed yourself with a bad energy diet. Stay away from the negativity of the news. 
I know so many people who go to bed at night to the horrible negatives of the nightly news, and that's what feeds their subconscious mind, and then they're always anxious and worried and nervous and fearful. And that shows up in the bedroom. I also think you must infuse your diet, your energy diet, with positive information, positive people, and positive vibrations. Whether you buy yourself a crystal tower or you have rose petals on the on the floor for your sweetie to get in bed or you're wearing beautiful pheromone perfume. I just found mine and realized it spilled all over my desk so I'm bathing in pheromone perfume today. And uh, just look at yourself as a very delicate being and everything affects our energies. So it's really important to have positive sources of energy all around you. And one of the other tips that I want to share is that during sex and talking about sex with your partner, we have to really make sound. I just had a client today who was here, a, a young man, and we were talking about the importance of making sound during sex because for some people that's their arousal pathway, but also it moves the energy. So it's really, it comes down to energy. When I look at my Mead circle as a medicine circle, which you can see on my website under the coaching page, what you see is that I have M E B S around the circle, but the middle of that circle is E for energy because energy runs everything. Mm. Great. So you, you, you have talked about crystals, affirmations, uh, being nature, sounds. How can, how can some people who are very uncomfortable with sounds begin to amplify this in their lives? They can practice on their own first. So Making sounds during sex or particularly at orgasm is something that women especially may have a hard time with because they may feel they're self-suppressing. They're afraid that they're going to embarrass themselves. They're afraid they may spark some fear in their partner. They also need to practice while they're experiencing solo pleasure. And that's the foundation, you know that as a sexologist, our, our solo pleasure patterns are the foundation for all shared sexual activities. So that's our, that's our laboratory, that's our playground. That's where we can get it to flow, get it to, to shine, get it to work to the capacity that we want as a sexual being to express ourselves. There's also one other thing that we haven't had time and we have a few more minutes, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So there's something else that I really want to talk about um, when it comes to spirituality and how to access that, how to, how to make the link with sexuality and spirituality, and that's the power of ritual. I think ritual probably runs most of our lives, and we don't even know it. When we get up, what do we do first thing in the morning? That's a ritual. Do you get up and put the water on and have your coffee? Do you get up and read the morning paper? Do you get up and get on your email? Do you get up and take a run? What is it that you do? Because you you live by ritual, whether you know it or not. And one of the most beautiful things I can do for a client, especially couples, I love working with couples, is to teach them the power of ritual and to get them to find objects that represent the love that brought them together in the first place, especially if they're in a very wounded state as a couple. And that might be their wedding picture. That might be having a flower that one of them gave the other, a dried flower or a living flower. Uh, I know that once a week when, it's funny, when I worked at National Planned Parenthood, this has nothing to do with couples, but it's about ritual. Every Monday morning, the director of the department would show up at work with a fresh bouquet of flowers. And it changed the entire environment. It was such a beautiful ritual because it sent a message of, I care about you. This is a wonderful start of another beautiful week. And we are sharing in this together. It was so symbolic and so real. And yet again, back to something I said earlier, back to revering nature, because it was a thing that was living. It was a thing that provided joy. 
and a focus, anticipation, the great ingredient of foreplay, of course. And it was a sense of beauty and of reverence of this ritual that she had created. I have so many clients who I coach to find music that they enjoy or a special throw they can put on their bed to, to signal to their partner, it's time, or even what they wear or what they drink or what they eat. And so the power of ritual is really quite profound and the more that you who are listening can bring ritual into your life consciously and allow yourselves to use ritual to open up for that spiritual dimension the better it's going to feel for you thank you so much uh what what about people who actually consider this uh, uh a bit contrived what would you say to that? Because I do hear that a lot, uh, you know, people who who feel that uh, uh, that would kill the mood. I say fake it till you make it. Mm. <laughs> I, I'm very tough with some of my clients. I'm a very loving, warm, compassionate container for my clients. And when I get that resistance, you're really talking about resistance. In fact, you've alluded to it many times on the show. And resistance is the enemy of creativity. Resistance is a a signal, it's a smoke screen, that there's something under it. And so as a great clinician, it's really our role to help them dig deeper. What's under that? And when I I create the space and, and I allow myself to ask and risk the questions of what's under that, I always get to the answer. And resistance can always be cleared. It's usually a screen, a smoke screen, an excuse, a way of preventing feeling that I am going to have to be vulnerable and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to be hurt. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Patty Britton, for being on this show. You shared so much with us, especially this last piece about resistance and what we can do so that we can evolve all together. So next week I have with me Uh, Rachel Jane Groover who will be talking about being feminine, present and spiritual. So tune in next week for Arrow's Evolution.